connected with the rise of centralized states. Uh, so that's a bit of a support for the Leviathan theory. Also supporting it is the fact that we today see eruptions of violence in zones of anarchy, in failed states, collapsed empires, frontier regions, mafias, uh, street gangs, and so on. The second explanation is that in many times and places there is a widespread sentiment that life is cheap. In earlier times when uh, suffering and early death were common in one's own life, one has fewer compunctions about inflicting them on, on others. And as technology and economic efficiency make life longer and more pleasant, one puts a higher value on life in general. This was an argument from the political scientist James Payne. A third explanation invokes the concept of a non-zero sum game and was worked out in the book Non-Zero by the journalist Robert Wright. Wright points out that in certain circumstances, cooperation or nonviolence can benefit both parties in an interaction, such as gains in trade when two, two uh, parties trade their surpluses and both come out ahead, or when two parties lay down their arms and split the so-called peace dividend that results in them not having to uh, fight the whole time. Wright argues that technology has increased the number of positive sum games that humans tend to be uh, embroiled in by allowing the trade of goods, services, and ideas over longer distances and among larger groups of people. The result is that other people become more valuable alive than dead and violence uh, declines for selfish reasons. As uh, Wright put it, among the many reasons that I think that we should not bomb the Japanese is that they built my minivan. <laughs> The fourth explanation is uh, captured in the title of a book called The Expanding Circle by the philosopher Peter Singer, who argues that evolution bequeathed humans with a sense of empathy, uh, a, an ability to treat other people's interests as comparable to one, one's own. Unfortunately, by default, we apply it only to a very narrow circle of friends and family. People outside that circle are treated as subhuman and can be exploited with impunity. But over history, the circle has expanded. Uh, one can see in historical record it expanding from the village to the clan, to the tribe, to the nation, to other races, to both sexes, and in Singer's own argument, something that we should extend to other sentient species. So uh, this, the, the question is, if this has happened, what has powered that expansion? And there are a number of possibilities, such as increasing circles of reciprocity in the sense that Robert Wright argues for. The logic of the golden rule, the more you think about and interact with other people, uh, the more you realize that it is untenable to privilege your uh, interests over theirs, at least not if you want them to listen to you. You can't say that my interests are uh, special compared to yours any more than you can say that the particular spot that I'm standing on is a unique part of the universe because I happen to be standing on it that very uh, minute. It may also be powered by cosmopolitanism, by histories, and journalism, and memoirs, and realistic fiction, and travel, and literacy, which allows you to project yourself into the lives of other people that formerly you may have treated as subhuman, and also to realize the accidental contingency of your own station in life, the sense that there but for fortune go I. Well, the, whatever its causes, the decline of violence, I think, has profound implications. It should force us to ask not just why is there war, but also why is there peace? Not just what are we doing wrong, but also what have we been doing right? Because we have been doing something right, and it sure would be good to find out what it is. Thank you very much. So I was just going to, I, I love that talk. Um, I think a lot of people here in the room would say that that expansion of, uh, that you were talking about, that Peter Singer talks about, is also driven by just by technology, by greater visibility of the other, and th the sense that the world is therefore getting smaller. I mean, is that also a grain of truth? Um, very, very much. I mean, it would fit both in Wright's theory that it allows us to uh, enjoy the benefits of cooperation over larger and larger circles, but also I think it helps us uh, 
uh, imagine what it's like to be someone else. I think when you read these horrific tortures that were common in the Middle Ages, you think, how could they possibly have done it? How could they have not have empathized with the person that they're, they're disemboweling? But clearly, they, uh, as far as they're concerned, this was just an alien being that does not have feelings akin to their own. Anything, I think, that makes it easier to imagine in trading places with someone else means that it increases your moral consideration to that other person. Well, Steve, I would love every news media owner to hear that talk at some point in the next year. I think it's really important. Thank you so much. My pleasure.